Hi, and welcome to the SEO podcast, Unknown Secrets of Internet Marketing. My name is Chris Burris, owner of eWebStyle. Charles Lewis, so internet marketing specialist. Welcome back to another fun-filled edition. This is podcast number 204. You can look on the wall right behind us, and yes, while we're looking at the wall right, right behind us, there. notice that there is a hashtag SEO podcast. Which, yeah. where, why is that there, Chuck? Well, hashtag SEO podcast is what you should be tweeting or Facebooking right now because uh, we've told you before, that's, that's us. We want to claim that. We want to own SEO podcast, and you can help us doing it by uh, hashtag SEO podcast. Be sure to tag us in it at eWebStyle. Uh, that way we can link up and do all of our social stuff. Man, I feel like I'm ahead. No, you're doing good. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're right on track. As always, there is a tip from a previous podcast. Maybe that's why we didn't do the yeah. tip first. Uh, this tip says user experience is extremely important as it relates to on-page optimization. Yes, we were talking SEO um, last week and things you can do about your on-page optimization. And one of the things to keep in mind is the experience that who's ever visiting your site is going to have. Definitely keep that experience in mind when optimizing your site. What pages are they going to look at? How prominent is this phone number? What action do you want them to take? How easy will they be able to navigate? Um, those sort of things you must definitely keep in mind when optimizing your site. User experience is definitely important. Absolutely, it's uh, it's also it also is interrelated with what we call SIBO, search engine visitor optimization. Um, there are if you enjoy this podcast, if you appreciate that we've got better sound now than we did three weeks ago, certainly than a couple months ago. Please do us one of two favors. In fact, you should do us both favors, or you could even do three. There's even it seems like we're adding more and more favors. One of the favors has only three steps. That's go on to iTunes, create an account, and write a review. If you write a review, especially if you're in another country, please go ahead and send us an email. I said send us an email at, to podcast at <laughs> e-webstyle.com. It just feels weird to say send us an email at, at podcast at, at e-webstyle. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and we'll we'll give you a punch in the face. The tiff. I actually have a couple reviews, uh, both iTunes and G Plus. We actually got three mm. G Plus local reviews. That's the other thing you can do for us. You can get onto our G Plus local account and write a review. We've made it incredibly easy. First yes. off, if you have a Webmaster Tools account, you have a G Plus account. Yes. If you have a Gmail account. You have a G Plus account. I think you kind of have to yeah. activate it, but that's a couple clicks. If you have a YouTube account, guess what? You have a G Plus lo a G Plus <laughs> account. So uh, if you have any one of those, the easiest way to get our G Plus local get to our G Plus local page is to go to e webstylecom slash G Plus or or G Plus or Google Plus and or there's Google one more. Plus. There you go. All of those will get you to our G Plus local page where you can write us a review. Since we're there already, let's go ahead and, oh, by the way, don't forget, we do have a referral program. If you have some SEO customers and you're not ready to handle them, send them our direction, you'll get paid. In fact, that addresses one of the issues here. Um, so here we have a G Plus local review. Let's re read them in, in order that we received them. This one's from Jonathan Brown. Five stars. Five stars. Great podcast. I always learn something from each podcast. There have been some audio issues. They have been resolved. Uh, but I can get past that for the great content. Plus, they are fun and entertaining. Remember, we are the Red Bull of SEO podcasts. It is actually safe to drive and listen to our SEO podcast. Oh, I always thought you was going to say something along the lines of we give you wings. <laughs> we give you wings. We give you wings <laughs> so that you can fly your website from position 10 <laughs> to position one. one. That's if you use our service, not yeah. just, well, actually people have said that that happens when they listen to our podcast. Mm -hmm. I promise you it's not osmosis, they're actually putting forth some effort and listening and doing what we're yeah, saying. Yeah, it takes action. Here's another one, this is uh, this is from a long time listener, good friend, Dean Calhoun. What's up, Dean? Uh, yeah, Dean, Punch thank you, you Dean. man. We haven't punched you in the face in a while, thank you so much. <laughs> He's always interacting with us on our Facebook page. Which, by the way, you can interact with us on our Facebook page. The easiest way to get to it is face, uh, yeah, facebook.com slash eWebStyle. You can also interact with us on our Twitter account, twitter.com slash eWebStyle. We have videos on our YouTube account, and that is youtube.com slash eWebStyle. And you can always send us an email, podcast at e-webstyle.com. Dean, who was five stars, says, awesome podcast, down-to-earth guys. Sound has gotten ten times better. 
And I still don't think he's heard the new mic. So yeah, no. yeah it's going to be like a hundred thousand million times better. That's a number. I think that number is actually called million. a Google. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> keep up the great work. Thank you. Punch in the face to Dean Calhoun. Mm, mm. Next, let's just keep breezing through these. Uh, Rob Wool. Five stars. He says, "Have a listen. Look at the look to at these guys. What? Yeah. So you can <laughs> listen me. to or look at these there guys." Goes. That's really, he's got a whole diagram in one sentence. Uh, a, a great help if you are interested in promoting your website in the search results. A patif, thank you uh, for the in-depth in depth answer. And we gave that answer to, uh, his, it was, uh, uh, we'll put webdesign-engine.co.uk. We gave a good answer to him uh, okay, so a while back. Okay, so he posted a question. Yep. All right, well, that's what's up. That is what's up. Patif face to you. To Mr. Rob Wool. And uh, finally, a an iTunes review. This is the, the title is awesome. Oh, that's a, a great description. <laughs> and it is five stars. And this is from MIT DRX. Uh, MIT DRX. Mitrix. Mitrix. Okay. Hmm. Uh, for some reason, it makes me th thought of uh, Max Matrix? Headroom no. or Matrix. There, yeah, that's probably better uh don't let the audio quality deter you this is an awesome podcast with great content uh by the way that's a big punch in the face when you're like look the audio sucks but the content is so good you should listen to it anyway yeah and by the way we fixed the audio and finally we have uh, a question let's let's get a little bit of news and then we'll get to the question so i thought there was some cool stuff on news uh there was a guy who fixed a bug on facebook right Facebook does have a fix our bug remuneration program mm -hmm. where you can actually get paid for fixing their bugs or making them aware of the bug. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess he didn't fix it. He just made them aware of it. Cause what you was would, the bug? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> but it turns out he violated Facebook's <laughs> terms of service, and so they didn't want to pay, pay him, him. Right? But apparently the bug was significant enough. Somebody, they were on MSNBC or something, and they're like, look, if Facebook's not going to pay this guy, I'll pay this guy, right? Because he's fixing bugs and protecting my privacy. I appreciate it. The, it actually ended up in a, one of those crowdsource funding really things. Really, Facebook? Yeah. He got 12K crowdsource funding. So people were like, yeah, dude, yeah, I'll give you 10 bucks yeah. for making sure my stuff doesn't get stolen. So I thought that was pretty good. And Facebook, that's, that's really, really lame. bad. Yeah. That's, that's lame. Yeah. That's like, that's douches. I, I have to believe that Mark doesn't really know about this and isn't keeping an eye on this because he's a programmer. And yeah. if you catch a bug, that can be a lot of effort to catch the bug and then to document it properly so that it can you can express it to Facebook so they can fix it. That's time. And you know, and he did that. By the way, how much staff time would it have cost, it, right, to find that bug? Anyway, uh, Google is adding WAS data to Maps, so yep. we. I couldn't remember who bought them, I think the last podcast, it turns out it was Google. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they're actually incorporating the WAS data into, Pox, po uh, into Maps, maps. W-A-Z-E.com. Mm -hmm. It's kind of cool, I enjoy it. Steve Ballmer's retiring, did you know that? I did yeah, know and that. announced it today. Uh, obviously CEO of Microsoft, uh, he's not retiring today. Uh, <laughs> when he's gonna retire. You know, this next year. Uh, and they're in the process. Bill Gates and other board members are going to be involved in figuring out uh, how to replace him. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, they asked him what his worst, um, it, what his biggest regret was. And he said, Vista. <laughs> that's awesome. I, I think that's awesome. That's awesomely honest, and, and I concur. That Along with probably Windows ME, Windows 2000 Business Pro. And another one that I would I would have to I, I would put those eight. <laughs> I know I would argue that <laughs> for obvious reasons he couldn't say yeah. Windows 8. Um, on our Facebook page, there's a cool slogan: "There is no crying in SEO." Yeah. And then uh, then I would like this one. There's a picture of Liam Liam Nielsen, right from um, uh, from Taker, not Taker, ta Taken, um, Taken. Yeah. yeah. You know where he's on the phone, right? And he's like, "I don't know where who you are or where you are." But when I find you, I'm going to ask you to remove those links. Yeah, because, <laughs> and, 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 you know, it takes an SEO to get that, man, especially if you're dealing with a situation where you need to, you know, a manual spam penalty or whatnot, and you're trying to remove links. It's difficult. 
It's mm-hmm. difficult to find people who are linked. Not difficult to find them. It's difficult to contact them and actually have them remove the link. So. We're getting more and more questions about uh, from from potential clients and existing clients, like what's going on with these links. These, uh, you know, actually, we're getting websites that are coming to us that have been flagged by Google, mm-hmm. and then we're like, okay, yeah, we can fix that. It's not an easy process. It's not a fun process. We're going to have to hire Liam Nielsen <laughs> <laughs> to make it happen. Mm-hmm. So, um, so yeah, it, was, it, it actually resonated with us uh, with things that have been going on here recently. And finally, a question from Facebook. Uh, Danielle Stewart, I have been listening to your podcast. I am really enjoying them. Love your approach and content. I am really interested in starting to market myself to help build websites, run social media marketing campaigns, and manage online brand management. What is the best way for me to get started? I have a lot of experience and have provided very good results in the past for various jobs and campaigns. I just don't know how to get started. Any advice you can give me and how I know how much to charge people to the best way to get new clients, et cetera, all, all those details. So you want to do everything we currently do. Yeah. Right? So basically you want us to fill tell out you how to be a, a competitor <laughs> to us. Yeah. yeah. Are you I like local? Fill out the application. Yeah, yeah, be local. Fill out an application and then, you know, and then we can take it from there. Uh, so, um, and, and I'll give you some advice. The first thing you should do is make your own website and put your own website on the first page of Google for terms that people are searching for relevant to internet marketing. That's the first thing you could do. Should do. Yeah, if you're not there, don't waste your time with anything else. Because uh, you know, the clients are going to ask. Yep. At the end of the day, every time we give somebody a proposal, our prices aren't, aren't necessarily uh, cheap, if you will. Um, but people, you know, we can justify the cost because if you go and search for SEO Houston or PPC Houston or Online Marketing Houston and several other SEO phrases. SEO podcast. Yeah. Uh, we show. Not only do we show, but we show on the first page and most of the time above the fold. And and that speaks volumes in regards to the service and the level of service we can provide. So uh, what was the name? Michelle. Uh, Michelle. I think. No, Danielle. Danielle. So, yeah, work on your site first. Yep. Getting your site in the right position, getting your social going, your PR going, because you – to familiarize yourself with it so you yep. can – you know, be confident in doing it for anybody else. Uh, secondly, we're on podcast number 204, so uh, why don't you listen to like zero through, well, probably not that old because most of that stuff probably doesn't work anymore, <laughs> like zero yeah. through 100, but maybe start at 120 and catch up. And, um, and that'll be plenty of information about social and SEO and paid search and everything else. So, Yeah, if you're looking for any guidance, you know, make sure you just listen to all of our podcasts. And like I said, Get, get your own website. Get on Make your, sure it kills it. Your website should kill it. Um, you know, ours doesn't kill it right now. And Not guess what? Yet. We're working on it. Yeah. Because we need to. There was a time when we weren't on the first page for Google. And we would, ha- we'd actually, people would ask for references and we'd actually have to give them references. We no longer do that. We now say, Google We're SEO your Houston. Reference. You will probably see us on two spots. One pay-per-click and one uh, position three, I think SEO Houston. Made. Google PPC Houston. You'll probably see us in two positions. One PPC Houston, first position. So um, we don't give re- references anymore. We just don't need to. And you know what? That is the potatoes. It is time to get into the meat of our podcast. So I was on Search Engine Watch today, haven't been there in a while, and I got an article from Jennifer. She says, seven tips uh, from Google on using Google authorship. I thought this was pretty cool uh, because we had a client where we were doing some things with and um, and I needed to change up the authorship markup. And so, um, you know, we knew what to do. But when I came across the article, I felt we review it, we share it. A couple of things, of course, I disagree with. Um, <laughs> and we'll take it from there. You're so disagreeable, Chuck. <laughs> Read an article. Eh. <laughs> do you, do you, as you're reading an article, do you now hear that in your head? Yep. Eh. Yeah. I don't see it. I hear it, though. <laughs> uh, so number one. Uh, now, most of the article is actually pretty correct. Uh, number one, she says, authorship is for articles and content by one author. Uh, this is key. You got to understand that, that Google set that up so people who, who, are, who want to read and absorb content, they want to be, they want to know, who is the author of this content? Who generated it? Who wrote it? Who published it? How can and I find more by that person? By that yeah. person, exactly. So authorship and the whole avatar being shown helps to show that. Uh, but it's, it's like she said, it's for, for articles and content by one author. So if you have a post um, that, that, that I wrote and that Chris wrote, then if, we, if I don't want to relinquish my credit to all him, 
then there isn't a way we can put authorship on that page. It's for one person. Right. So so keep that in mind. As as an example, we get our podcast transcribed. It gets split split into three pieces, and effectively we put one piece by me, one piece by Chuck, one piece piece by me, and rotate that through so that I mean Chuck is as much an author of these podcasts as I am. So uh, that's the kind of a way that we figured out to do yeah. that. Definitely. I, the other one I would recommend. Um, Either a paintball tournament or arm wrestling, if you both wrote an article. Either yeah, one. and Those see who are, gets it. Yeah. Or, or or even make that arrangement prior to, you know, understanding that well, eventually we'll publish this article and authorship needs to be set up. Um, I, I, you know, yeah. <laughs> you know, as long as you make that arrangement up front, then then it is what Maybe it is. Maybe a part one, part two. Exactly. Good way. Um, so number two, authorship isn't for product description pages or property listings. Um, this is key. So if you think about, let's say, like um, 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 an MLS page, for example, um, you don't really want authorship set up there if, if the, the content on that page is being pulled from several sources and you have this page with just listings. Um, that's not what Google is looking for. You can't be the, the author of that, if you will. Same thing with, like, uh, let's say, an e-commerce site. Uh, you may click on a category page or whatnot, and on that category page, there are several categories of products. Um, that's not the place to be setting up authorship because, again, that's not a page of content. That's a, that's more of a, a, a listing of resources and products. And so you don't want to do that. Because definitely, uh, speaking of e-commerce, this isn't even, isn't even on the list, but I'll say that. Um, you definitely don't want to set up authorship on a product description page and that description is dupe content from the manufacturer or something like that because it's clear at that point that... Uh, you not the author you didn't write it so don't set that up um number three and now wow that's kind of back well, number three was authorship doesn't work for multiple authors they put yet here i'm curious to see how there may be some sort of markup that'll come that'll allow you to tag which content you actually wrote um i think it's a while before we get to that um, number four authorship is for real people not personas um now, I would love and can't wait until Google allows it to be, and I won't say for personas, because that sounds kind of fake, like a fake, well, no, well it's, it's look, the right yeah, term, that's the right, right? That's like, the right term. Like the SEO rapper is a persona. that's different than Mo Serious or, or Poet and Profit or, or anything like that. Right. You're absolutely right. Um, and so I can't wait for Google to allow that. Right now, everything I post, whether it's gospel related, whether it's internet marketing related, whether it's food related, I post a lot about different things, they all have to come from Charles Lewis. Yeah. Um, I which actually think, I think it should be author and company, right? Yeah. So, so Charles we, Lewis from e, e style. style. And if, yeah. you move, if you were to move on to another company, it would be associated with that because the company should get some credit for that too. That's, mm -hmm. that's what I think. Especially since the company, well, and indirectly the company is listed, which is the next one. The oh, next one is you, real versus author versus real versus publisher. And so when you setting up your author tag, you set up yourself as the author. And then you set up your company as the publisher. Oh. Only problem is, publisher is doesn't work with, with the author tag. And so meaning- You don't see an icon of, of from, in this from, case, eWeb style. Exactly, right. you, don't, you don't see that icon right there. You see, <laughs> yeah. You don't even see that on our website. That's, a, that's how amazing Google is. <laughs> <laughs> you only see the, the, the author's uh, avatar. And so, so I think they're working on it. Um, but right now, um, authorship is not for people. I mean, it's not for personas, it's for people. Right. You need to change that. Because what, you know, my question is, in a situation, um, let's say we had multiple authors, right, writing content for a specific company. Uh, wouldn't it be okay to just have the company as the author of all of that content? Yep. As a, as a company, I really believe in employees having getting credit, mm -hmm. and I should should have the option. So maybe if somebody leaves, then I may want to migrate that back to just company content, right? Because what if they leave to go write for my well, competitor know, or yeah. or yeah, somebody else, some negative. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you want to be able to control your content. So, so yeah, um, author versus publisher. I will be key in saying this. Um, uh, be careful in setting up authorship because a lot of times people who don't know how to do it, and, I, and I've done this before I've learned, 
Uh, you go to Google, you get some instructions. On the instructions, it says, it references the publisher link first. And so you'll set it up and you'll wonder why your avatar isn't showing because you're using real versus publisher instead of real versus author. Right. So be sure to have the correct uh, tag on the inside. Um, number six, uh, for articles in different languages linked to the same Google Plus profile. The, uh, especially since you can only have one, right, with that email address. Um, so, so it doesn't matter kind of what we said earlier. If I have one site in English, one site in, in French, and another site uh, that's on a totally different subject matter, they all should link to the same Google Plus profile for now. Yeah. Um, and last but not least, number seven. This is the one I disagree with. Uh, how to prevent Google from showing Arthur? <coughs> oh, I'm sorry, that was early. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my, my, I put why. Why would you want to prevent Google from showing Arthur? Like the 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 signs of how click throughs go up and how people feel more confident clicking it. Like there, I can't think of a reason why you would not want to show authorship. Yeah, so if you, there is a way. Don't put authorship. <laughs> exactly. I that's, mean, don't set it up. Don't set it up. Oh, is that what? That's they, what they said. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's that's why I put a question mark. Like, duh. How else do you not get it? Yeah. Just don't set it up. How do I not get in that house illegally? Don't you, break you in. Don't yeah. get into that. <laughs> yeah. So uh, punch in the face to Jennifer. I don't. I think you was reaching on number seven, Jenny. But I got you. Uh, <laughs> you know <what> I'm saying? <laughs> but yeah, uh, I can't think of any reasons why you wouldn't want to set up authorship. I mean, if you don't, if you're scared to set up authorship, you don't want people to know you wrote this content. Don't publish it. Just, it just seems weird. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and the, yeah, the, it reminds me of all the comments we read. I'm like, wow, you really shouldn't put your picture next to your comment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's just not smart. Cool. Yeah. And not cool. He's being a douche. Hey, we didn't do that. Hey, remember, we are your friendly local mm -hmm. neighborhood top position <laughs> snatches, where our mantra is... Don't be a douche. Do we have any uh, blank stare or anything? Um, well, yeah, we do got blank All stare. Right. I'm sorry. What? Yeah, what stare? <laughs> Here we go. What? Yeah, so this one goes to Yahoo, actually. They, um, in, in, <laughs> they I know. They a lot of blank staring, don't they? So in July, they actually topped Google as the most visited search site okay. just for July okay and so count score released the numbers I don't know what that means <laughs> right so it was so so some of the comments were it could have been because they recently purchased tumblr and so that could have had something oh, to do with okay, it yeah. they got more site visits right either that and I'm chunking it up to the fact that um, football season starting also, and I'm in also, two yeah. fantasy football leagues with Yahoo. Both so, on Yahoo. Yeah. yeah, I think that's You it. use Yahoo once a year, right? Yeah, yeah. for football season. season. Yeah. And then that's it. Wow. Would you migrate to another uh, fantasy heartbeat. football? Yeah, if there was a decent one out there? Yahoo is great. It, like I like that one better than NFL.com. Right. And so, so <laughs> maybe there's a little project. <laughs> yeah, I would. To answer your question, let, let Google. As long as do it was as good enough as it was Google, or I don't yeah, know. Yeah, because Google would be style. like, you know, I could see how Google would do it now. Introducing fantasy football, and we can import your Yahoo stuff. We yeah. import your Yahoo stuff, and then we actually have cameras that follow the football <laughs> players that you have yeah. selected for your team around. Yeah, we have <laughs> player street view or something. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I wonder what he's seeing right now. Oh, I didn't want to see that. Yeah, so <laughs> the, he's not starting this week. <laughs> <laughs> not going to make it. <laughs> yeah, I can dig it, Google. Make that happen. I, you can beta test it on me. Yeah, maybe that WAS data will help you. <laughs> All right, you have tuned in to the most popular internet marketing and SEO podcast in All the country, in the in U.S., the in the world, in the universe, uh, across the plains of your <laughs> something uh, thank you guys for tuning in we are the most popular because of you again go ahead and write an iTunes review for us if you can go on to our G plus account and write in a review if you can G plus we really appreciate it we really appreciate it and until the next podcast my name is Chris Burris Charles Lewis bye bye for now yeah <laughs>